Hi everyone, my name is Alex Pelzewitz and I am so excited to get in the kitchen and start cooking with you all today and talk about not only some great affordable everyday recipes, um, but talk about how cooking doesn't have to be scary and how it can be really creative. And then of course the other thing we're going to always focus on is how we can support our local producers. Um, so I thought I would have this welcome start here at the Barraga Farmer's Market location. The, the Farmer's Market isn't happening at the moment, but uh, the scenery is too beautiful to pass up. You can visit this Farmer's Market on Wednesdays from 4 to 6 um, and should be going till October. Hey everyone, so we are here at the downtown Houghton Farmer's Market, which happens on Tuesdays from 4 to 6 p.m. And as you can see kind of in front of me here, I've got some of my goods. Um, and I got everything that I just put in that cooler for like less than, it was like about $35. And there's meat, there's all these veggies, um, and some stuff that we're gonna turn into meals upon meals. So I'm super excited um, and we'll be in the kitchen soon. We've got a lot of recipes that we're gonna go over. Um, like I said, this is really to just kind of help you make you feel more comfortable. Um, you could watch these right before you cook the recipes, um, but the idea is to kind of see some of the techniques and see how things come together and hopefully um, have some entertainment. Um, so let's get started. So the first thing that I'm gonna do today is something that's gonna take a little longer because we have to bake it in the oven. We're gonna do zucchini muffins, which is super exciting. Like I said, the specifics are gonna be in this Good and Cheap cookbook, um, but I'll kind of try to go through them as I'm making them. So first we're gonna start with the chocolate zucchini muffins. Um, we've got in the bowl the dry ingredients, which is gonna be flour, um, a cup and a half of flour, a cup and a half of dried oats. Um, I've already got the salt in there. There's a cup and a half of sugar, so there's a, this is probably gonna be our least healthy recipe of the day, but remember, um, you always wanna be able to have a snack. Um, I've got a little bit of cinnamon in there, and then just to kind of show you how I measured everything, I used the same for all these different dry ingredients, at least the larger amounts. I've just used this, um, you know, my one measuring cup, I kept reusing it. I've got what's left in here is the cocoa powder, which is a half, half cup, and the two teaspoons of baking soda, which I'm also gonna add to this bowl. Um, so then we have all of our dry ingredients together. Um, but I do like to mix the dry ingredients first, just because I think it helps incorporate things. So we've got, our, like I said, the flour, the sugar, the oats, the baking soda, the salt, the cinnamon, um, and the cocoa powder all in this bowl. And I'm just using a nice metal, like, slotted spoon, but any type of stirring utensil is totally fine. And we're just going to try to get everything kind of incorporated before we add it to the wet ingredients. And I'm actually going to do the same thing with the wet ingredients, which is going to be the yogurt. Um, I used a little bit of a maple yogurt and then I've got some local eggs in here. So first I'm going to kind of mix these together. Just using a spatula which I'm going to end up using to stir the whole batch of everything. But the most important ingredient is going to be your zucchini. So the zucchini has been grated. I just used a regular cheese grater to do this. So I'm going to add that in with the eggs and the yogurt. All right, I'm going to clean off my hands really quick. Okay, so then we're gonna mix the zucchini in a little bit before we start adding all of our dry. I almost feel like I'm gonna make this decision now. So this is a great showcase of like, it's okay, if you're making mistakes, you're gonna, I don't wanna stop, so I'm just gonna keep going and so you're gonna see me make some changes and adjustments. I already can look at these two bowls and think, oh, that's not gonna be easy to mix. So I'm gonna go to this larger bowl, with my wet mixture, make sure I use my spatula to get everything out of the bowl. You don't wanna waste any of these delicious ingredients. All right, so we've transitioned to our larger bowl. Now we can start adding our dry. I like to add kind of, you know, it's not like it's a muffin recipe isn't super scientific. You're not, there's no right or wrong. But I do like to add just some of the dry first so that I can kind of get it incorporated. And you can see it's starting to come together. Kind of once I get it going there, I feel comfortable I can add the remainder of my dry ingredients. All right, so then we're left with this 
one bowl. And then there are some optional, the cinnamon was optional, um, but I opted in because I love cinnamon. And then I also am going to opt into the chocolate chips. They use dark chocolate chips. I've decided to use white chocolate chips. I love white chocolate. Um, and I think it'll create a really nice, like pretty, pretty muffin. So at this point, all that's left is mixing it until it really kind of comes together and looks a little bit more consistent and that you've got all the dry worked into the wet. And make sure, I like to use a spatula because that helps me like continuously kind of scrape down the sides so that I get all of the dry ingredients. But yeah, it's already coming together pretty quickly. So as you can see, this is a super easy recipe. Most of the work is just in grating the zucchini, which I don't know, maybe it took me three minutes to grate one large zucchini. Um, it called for two cups. Um, I didn't measure the two cups out. I just used a large zucchini and it felt like it looked about right. All right, and then at this point, I think I've got it pretty well mixed. Um, then it's the fun part. This would be something to do with the kids. Um, I already pre-greased two of these um, baking sheets. And um, so I just use butter and we've not baking sheets, these are muffin pans. And so at this point, I'm just gonna grab a spoon and I'm gonna fill these, I'm gonna check the recipe. So I would say they do about three quarters full. It's not gonna rise too crazy, um, but definitely don't fill them all the way to the top um, or you'll have them really going everywhere. Um, now this part, we're probably gonna edit most of this because you don't need to see me putting all of this in it. Maybe it'd be cool if you could speed it up. But again, this is such a great, um, task for the kids to do to get them involved. It's a really fun thing to do with friends. Um, and let's just do a couple so you can kind of see what I'm talking about with how full. And it's nice once you get started, you can usually start to know, okay, like how much to put on my spoon. All right, so a little bit more. I think that one and these ones look good. So you're kind of, like I said, three quarters of the way, those are almost maybe a little full. I might wanna go like that, just a little bit more in that one. But yeah, so then you fill up all your pans and evenly distribute it, and then you're going to be baking them in the oven. We've got our oven already preheating um, at 350, and you'll be baking them for about 20 minutes. I like to kind of set the timer for 18 or 20 and then check on them and you're gonna stick a fork in them or a toothpick or a, like a butter knife just to see, you know, does it come out clean? If there's still like gonna be batter on it, that means they're not quite done. So um, I'm gonna fill up the rest of these. Okay, so I put the muffins in the oven and now I'm gonna set my timer really quick. And I've got it set for 20 minutes and that's when we'll check on them. So the next thing, next few recipes we're gonna go into are really delicious, really simple. Um, you know, don't be overwhelmed about the fact that I'm multitasking. You don't have to multitask, but I hope it shows like how easy some of these recipes can be. So the first one that I wanna start with it's going to be a kale Caesar salad. So I'm really excited. I've actually never made this recipe before. So I've got this big bowl of kale here. This was that last leaf that I ripped off and for the kale, all I did was just quickly kind of run my knife through just so that it was in pieces. Um, so super simple. That's where I got this whole bowl of kale from. Set that aside. So the next thing we're gonna do is the dressing for this. So. First, you it's just drop the egg into a large mixing bowl. I've done kind of the opposite in the sense of just to kind of save you guys some time. In here so far, I only have the lemon juice, which should be the next ingredients you would add with the egg yolk. So I've got lemon juice, I've got the Dijon mustard, I've got a little garlic because I chose to opt in for some fresh garlic and I just um, used a clove of local garlic um, and minced it. 
So I've also added the salt and pepper, which I might add more. Um, so I've got that mixed. Now the next thing that you're going to do for this is you're going to be using, you wanna make sure, you know, I highly recommend always buying local eggs because that's another year round local product that you can get. Um, and it usually is a little bit more pricey than the grocery store, but not much. And I think it's totally worth those extra few cents and it helps put money back into your community since you're buying from your neighbors. So I'm using this other bowl here um, and I'm gonna use the shell to kind of help separate that yolk from the rest of it. I'm just gonna go through and see there's no more white really coming off of. So I've got this beautiful egg yolk, which I'm gonna put right in there. And you can save this white. So kind of give you a close up here. Um, we've got that Dijon mustard, the lemon juice, the salt and pepper in there. Now I've got that egg yolk. And I'm just gonna really mix, mix that good and get everything super incorporated. And then the next step is we're going to be drizzling in olive oil. And so I'm just using this. We've got this Field Day Organic, and it says about three tablespoons, and you're going to drizzle it in while you're whisking. And that's gonna help it kind of create this, the, when you have a Caesar, this is a kale Caesar salad. So when you have a Caesar dressing, um, it's a thicker dressing. And I'm just gonna drizzle. Now I'm not gonna measure. I'm gonna just kind of feel it out. That's three. I'm gonna put down my oil. I'm still gonna give it one good kind of, and it's not like super thick, you know, it's not like a stiff pink. You just wanna make sure that it's emulsified and kind of the oil doesn't separate. You want that oil to be incorporated. All right, mm, that smells so good. So um, I wanna taste it. You should always taste everything that you're cooking. Now I'm just cooking for me today, so I'm actually gonna do this method where I'm just gonna a little bit on my finger. Now remember, you're gonna be putting it on vegetables that don't have any unnecessarily salt. So you want it to be a little salty. You want it to be a little bit more overpowering because once you add the greens, that's gonna kind of dull down the flavor. So it's okay if it's a little salty. And I think we're good. So then this next step is just like you would do with any salad. You know, for, for Caesar especially, you wanna be able to mix this in but for um, any salad, you wanna really coat the, the leaves and kind of almost massage them. So I've got my kale, I've got my dressing, I've got my gloved hand. We're just gonna pour that dressing over the top. Yum, smells so good. And you can see, just wanna massage it. And there we are. So you could add um, you could add croutons to this. You could add um, Parmesan cheese. But today I've decided to do a Romano cheese. So I've got it already grated here. Now I would recommend letting this sit before serving or before eating. So um, I'm gonna actually put this in the the fridge, and I'll be diving into this later or sharing this with some friends at the co-op. Thank you all so much for joining. A uh, big shout out to the Marquette Food Co-op who let me use their recording equipment for the demo portion of the video. A big thank you to the Western Upper Peninsula Food System Collaborative who made this whole thing possible. And then I just wanted to let you know that all of the, the recipes that I made are all from the Good and Cheap Cookbook. Um, it might be hard to believe, but we actually decided to cut it short and I made six recipes in this, but we just shared two with you. Um, but the reason that I chose that cookbook in particular is because it's not only great, but it's a free PDF. So that means that you can follow along with those recipes um, here, but you can also dive into all the other great recipes that they've listed, which is really exciting. Um, in those six recipes that I made, I think I only spent like 40 bucks on six different recipes. So um, really great cookbook, lots of great introduction, introduction tips, but then tons of wonderful recipes. And then the last point, of course, is to shop local um, and support your neighbors. So of course, you can always pick up a local food guide from Taste the Local Difference. But I also wanted to share that you can use our Find Food and Farm app here. So I'm just going to click Find Food and Farms. And this is a really great way to use our database to find stuff near you. Just a quick example, say you're looking for farmer's markets and you're in Houghton County area. So I'm going to choose Houghton and I'm going to hit filter results. And here you can see that we've got all these different options of farmer's markets in the area. So 
one last time, thank you all again. And thank you to all of the farmers and producers for, of course, providing us with nourishment and get out there, cook and taste the local difference. Cheers. <laughs>